Welcome to hole number one of this Wild West tournament here on the Wiseacre Ranch course. Starting off strong with a Zerk and an extra mile max top. About a bar here of left spin just to stay away from that right side fairway bunker. That's definitely in play. So please do stay away from that. As you can see, I'm playing this one 0%. I think 10% is really the primary adjustment number here. But 0, 10, it's not really going to matter as long as you're going to hit max over power. Now, if you did adjust there, you'd want to push back up to maximum distance before you make your shot. Max OP, baby. Try to hit perfect. That's going to be very, very helpful. Um, but even a great left here should be perfectly fine and very small great rights should be fine. That bunker, like I said, you see it there. Maybe, maybe not on the right-hand side. It can be a problem. So just stay away from it and leave yourself a beautiful second shot. Second shot, then, you are playing with a wedge, which is a great way to give yourself a confident chance at an eagle. I have found a few glitchy spots on this green in the past, so just try to find a nice sweet spot and stick with it. 20% rule works here with the uh, Firefly, even though the end bringer is what I would recommend and what I typically play. You got to use what you got. You might have a skewer in your bag. You might have something else. That's just fine. It should work out beautifully, though. Even into this difficult cross headwind on the second shot. Hitting perfect. Line it up to give you an eagle to start this tournament. That's what we need, baby. Going to get those booms. Looking forward to the next hole. Hole number two. This part three, it's got two main ways to play it. I think the best way to drop this is one back, three right, with either a katana or a king maker. And you're going to go for this beautiful little rough bump. You can see in this wind angle that I do have the left edge of the ball guy just touching the pin. It's going to matter on the tournament setup how you're going to particularly play this. I adjust 0% minimum distance here with the sniper. Now, you can also bounce this one on the fairway right beside this rough and go directly at the pin that way. You might need to use a little bit more backspin and perhaps some left spin. So a different shot, but a possibility nonetheless. I think this rough bump, though, is going to be the way that most players are going to go. I think it's looking fine. I'll see you on hole number three. Welcome here to hole number three. This first par five, I'm showing you the way that you should actually play it if you have headwind. I'm going to play four top, a bar of left spin here, and I would actually give this one as much overpower as rings that I pull into. So it might, for example, be two to three or so rings of overpower. I really think I should have played with this wind in the method I'll show you in the second shot here. So play on the right-hand side if you've got a really bad crosswind that is not congruent with the overpower play or if you do have a bad headwind. But as you can see, it plays just fine in tailwind as well. And what this does is it actually allows us to play here nicely with the power three ball. Of course, it depends on the level of clubs that you're bringing to the table. I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to try to win banners and help you win some banners too. So, all right, second shot, we're looking at a wood club here and we do have a tree to contend with. Uh, no, excuse me, the bunker. I knew there's a, uh, a hazard here to contend with. Now, what I've done is I've gone ahead here and I'm playing this one as a rough bump. You could definitely bounce this one up. That's certainly an option, but I adjust this shot at negative 20% minimum distance. And I think this sets us up really, really nicely for an albatross opportunity. It all depends, you know, on your game, your comfort level. You could bounce over this bunker. You could bounce before it. So I just want to show you the options that I feel are going to give us a really good chance to victory. And uh, yeah, I'll show you this hole one more time with a little bit more aggression. All right, so hole number three, I think this is the way that most people are going to play this, especially if you have tailwind or crosswind. Four and a half top, two left. As you can see, I've got a Zerk and an EM, and we're looking to get as much out of this drive as possible. That second last fairway up there has a lot of room to land and a lot of room where we're going to have our landing position. So max OP, about a half a ball of left curl here. We're going to grip it and rip it. And boom, baby, you're going to see here. I thought we we're going to. There we go. Perfect ball. Getting it down as nice and far as you can. It's going to really depend on what club, what ball you bring to the party, and what kind of win Playdemic decides to give us here in the actual live tournament play. So get a nice drive there. 412 yards. Going to set up that second shot. Uh, I estimated by looking at the video, because we do miss this shot, that I should have played this shot at 15% minimum distance giving it about 4.5 bars of backspin here and i did over adjust here ever so slightly so my correction would be to play here in this type of condition at 15 percent min you see there 20 percent. i should be pulling about 1.8 rings or so i do have a tendency sometimes to over adjust 
I know sometimes you have a tendency to hit that thumbs up button. So feel free to do that and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of my live tournament golf clash play or live tour play. Loving this game right now, and I love hanging out and playing it with you. So good luck in the tournament. I hope you get those booms and make those adjustments. We'll see you on hole number four. Welcome to hole number four. This is a par four, and I'm playing here on the right-hand side. EM6, EM7, both should get you down here with the power three ball. You might have to use a little bit more top spin, though, say four or so with that EM6. Instead, I'm playing a couple bars of top spin, about two to three, depending on the win, and two to three bars of left spin here. Simple, straightforward drive. I do have to pull it into overpower here ever so slightly. So then what I do to compensate for that is, of course, just adjust a little bit into overpower. Now, we're just going to try to hit our landing position here after a nice 10% maximum adjustment. Beautifully over. And, man, I'm happy my game doesn't glitch like that anymore. That was a little bit of older footage. So second shot then from 332 yards. I'm actually playing with a runner here. 0% mid distance is the adjustment here. And in, end up giving this one seven bars of top spin. I take away the side spin and we just go right at it. If you're fortunate enough to have a runner 10, this should give you a nice ball guide all the way to the pin. But a little bit of imagination and a little bit of visualization into this headwind. I do have the top of the green ring touching the rough. If you've got tailwind here, well, you probably would have played the next method. But if you decide to play on the right side with tailwind anyway, make sure just the top of the yellow ring is at the top of the rough there. You don't want to miss the rough on this rough bump, okay? So quick little bump. Roll, baby. Get in the hole. Come on. All right, so hole number four. I start teasing a little bit here like, yeah, I'm going to play a conservative again. Because it's like, okay, I know it works, and it's certainly doable, but then I start to think about it. I'm sure the viewers are taunting me, like, come on, Baldy, go for it, baby. So that's what we're going to do. We grab that extra mile. We upgrade the ball here to a Zerk, because you know what? We need that power to make it down there. Max top, max left. That's four and a half top. Two bars of left spin here with the extra mile level seven. I do think this would absolutely make it down nicely with an extra mile six as well. You might not be quite to the green, but you're going to be like a little bit to the left of it. And oh, and please hit uh, a nice perfect here. No double great rights. Uh, definitely not what I was hoping for. Might even be a triple great, depending how you look at it here. But at the end of the day, what this is going to do is get us very, very close to the green. As you can see, we would have played a little to the left nicely, but we still get the rollout. I want to show you sometimes it is worth it to go for it. Hole number five, par three, and I would say this is an excellent chance for a hole in one. Zero percent mid distance, setting this one up with a navigator and a sniper. Just about 0 0.6 or so bars of topspin here into this light, light breeze. 2.5 cross tailwind, of course. We're always going to have to work on that in the tournament situation, but this one sets up very, very well. Um, nothing really more to say about it. This is the kind of par three that we dream about in a tournament situation to get something that we can have consistently, hopefully, and really rely on to get us through and get that nice score for the banner, baby. Come on. We'll see you on the next one. Welcome to hole number six. This one here in rookie. This is going to be mostly a just get that eagle and run kind of play. I'm bringing 4.5 top two right spin with this extra mile and a titan ball now if you have an em7 here going to be a good advantage if you have say the em4 you might need to use a power five ball especially because that second shot is still very very long now there is a little bit of a play to the right but it is challenging with low level clubs so i want to just get this one nicely over the river here bounce and roll just like that just close to the rough but we got this calculated beautifully to leave ourselves a second shot with the big dog. Now, bring whatever club you have that has the most distance because you're going to need it. This one, as you can still, still requires quite a bit of effort. I say anywhere from one bar of topspin to one bar of backspin here, depending on the drive. And you're going to need to use like a, like a ball and a half to maybe, you know, maximum right curl here. Again, depending on the situation you're in, this is generally the path that I recommend for the most and widest number of rookie players because if you don't get the eagle here, you're going to be in a real bad position. So, you know, just estimate it. There is a chance to get that drop, but I think you're going to get that eagle very, very nicely. Hole number seven. This is what I would call 
a kind of a long par four. Now you can bounce it over these bunkers that you see here if you don't have quite the distance to reach over. But at the end of the day, where my ball comes to rest is roughly where you want your ball to come to rest. Right before those second bunkers there is really gonna be a safe play. In this scenario, I play this one with like two back and three bars of right spin. And I just adjust this shot 10% max. Now you might need to use a few top spin and bounce over those bunkers. But ultimately, it's the same idea. You're going to come over here and give yourself a beautiful second shot with a wood club. If you've got big clubs, big balls, there is a power play off to the right there. But I don't think most rookie players are going to manage it. The second shot here leaves us in about minimum distance there. You can see right there with our sniper. I do have to move it up a little bit here because of the tailwind to give me a little bit of a room to adjust. So I ended up giving it about two and a half back, one and a half right. And I come at this one, like I said, 0% minimum distance anytime that you have a par four that leaves you with a wood club for the second shot i'd say it's a lower chance of a drop i definitely would like to be in short iron range or better as i'm sure everyone would so there's so many variables for who might be playing rookie and what kind of account you might have so i just try to show a good variety here you could definitely upgrade here to a king maker if you want to give yourself that extra push to get there closer but at the end of the day i think you got a very nice chance with this option and i'll see you on hole number eight hole number eight par three and once again you know these par threes are really good scoring opportunities for us i set up this shot with a sniper and a navigator and i'm giving it 0 0.5 bars of backspin setting up with the top of the yellow ring at the top of the rough and this little rough bump right at the pin 10% mid distance on this adjustment. So we should pull that about 2.1 rings into this 2.2 wind. It's all going to depend on that wind. I say it over and over again. But don't forget it, okay? And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'd love for that. And I hope you would love it too. Because, you know, I love playing Golf Clash on this channel. And hey, a few other games just for fun and variety to keep things fresh. It is all about the fun, right? So don't forget it. I hope you have fun in the tournament, but I also hope you do very well. It should be fun. Join me in the live stream. We'll check you on the course. All right, so hole number nine, I'd consider this a conservative play here, even though you see me using a Zerk. You can go four top, four and a half top, two right with my extra mile level seven. It's because we're playing on the right side, and what this does is it actually leaves us with a longer shot, that second shot. Now, this is actually the way that I would play in headwind or crosswind. And you might even want to bounce over this bunker here. Um, it's all going to depend on the length of clubs that you have and, you know, your comfort level with the game. It's uh, it's interesting, but you want to get this one to the end of the right fairway when you're playing the right side, which makes a lot of sense to me. But, you know, sometimes we got to add that to the notes, right? Oh, yeah, notes. Don't forget to check out my AirlikeGaming.com website. Oof, let's avoid that rough, but just get it down here one way or another. And this is going to be the best way, I think, in headwind especially and some of the difficult crosswinds. Second shot leaves us with a sniper here under the tree. And if I stretch it out a little bit, you'll see that I'm not quite in maximum distance. You might get away with playing a kingmaker here if you make a nice drive. You just want to practice, right? And that's why if you come to my live stream, you'll see I'm practicing these shots. I'm trying different options. If you want me to try something, come in and let me know. Give me some feedback. Preferably not after I've practiced 17 times already. And then you have a bright idea. No, I love you. Thank you very much, everybody. I absolutely think this is just an incredible experience playing this game with each and every one of you. And hopefully we get some booms. Get those albatross. Let's get them in the tournament, though. That's when they count the most. Hole nine, par five, last hole of the tournament here. We're going to have a Titan ball with a big topper here in Tailwind. Giving it max top spin and what i want to do here is adjust this shot 10 percent max and we're going to push it to max in other words grip it and rip it with wind this low you know what you need to do you need to hit perfect that's what you need to do but hey you can also see that a slight grade here should hopefully work out well for you also we do want to avoid that great right because that bunker on the right and as you can see here this can be a bit of trouble Second shot, I do play this one with a long iron. You can play it with a long iron of your choice. Of course, Goliath, Grizzly, um, whatever it is that you happen to have leveled up in your bag. I play here 10% max. I give it two bars of backspin. And, you know, I think this is going to be a great opportunity for Albatross on this hole. This course, I think it's actually really, really good. Um, one of the newer courses in the game. Lots of great opportunities here. 
definitely some difficult scenarios with certain wins, but that's, you know, to be expected, and I think it's definitely part of the game. I'm looking forward to it. I think we're going to have a great tournament. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I hope to catch you out there. Make sure you're just going to hit perfect, baby. Don't think too much about it. Just enjoy the experience. At the end of the day, this is a game. Games are meant to be fun. It's a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.